Um, so I would like to share some thoughts here in our devotion. And I want you to relate this to yourself. Um, how you feel sometimes. Uh, sorry, let me put it this way. Um, what if we were, what if we take gentleness at work? Uh, I'll be talking this week and next week about the power of being gentle. Uh, right now, it seems everyone is on age and short, in a short fuse, you can't. You can't hold resistance. You blow up. Uh, leaders encounter thirsty clients and even co-workers during normal seasons. But uh, in the midst of the pandemic, the COVID, and now the economic pandemic, uh, people are very prickly very prickly, ni kama wanazile miba ambazo zinapatikana kwa mti unaitwa cactus or acacia tree. And it's a harrowing journey fraught with uh, danger at every turn. From staff meetings to sales calls to online classes like this one, emails and texts from colleagues. Sometimes somebody is sending you what they think is a joke. You look at it and you get so pissed off. Uh, even facial expressions on Zoom. Uh, I don't know whether you know some, some of us, because we don't turn on our cameras, we make others become very prickly. Uh, we often feel we are navigating rational fire swamps. Uh, uh, visima via moto. Uh, angst and short temperedness abound. Temperedness abound. So there is anger and short temperedness around. Ukienda nyumbani mtota kikros njia, they get a kick. Or a shout. Uh, your wife asks, uh, how was your day? You tell her, please shut up. Uh, and vice versa. So all of us are trudging through a messy muddle as we attempt to re-engage with work, with uh, studies, unique schedules like you, how many of you are running like crazy to get to class and people's moods. Collectively, we are still journeying through, if you ask me, COVID hasn't ended, a very stressful season. Because after COVID, Kenya, then we had elections, then we have uh, the economic downturn, and we keep getting all kinds of messages. Now petrol is coming down. Now uh, the Kenya shilling is getting strong. But you know, just last week we bought very expensive money, the euro bond. Obviously, the dollar would have to go up. I mean, go down. Uh, but that's not a, that's not it. The, the the real economic situation is very very difficult. Perhaps now more than ever, we need the rare quality of gentleness. It's essential in our workplaces, the boardroom, strategic planning sessions, and daily meetings with clients for us to adapt to gentleness. Uh, I've been in a very intense writing workshop at Stony Athi, and I was still doing all these things I'm doing, and then yesterday, my director Wardell tells me, oh, we must, we would like to have a delegation come and see you about the conference that is coming. And uh, But I almost, I had to be gentle because I was asking, can't you see, <laughs> I'll run crazy. So I told her, why don't you have a Zoom meeting at seven in the morning? 
And uh, of course, I knew uh, the import of the meeting, why it was urgent. Again, a lot of pressure. So in the post pause spotlight on Christian-like character, he features gentleness as a slice of the Spirit's fruit. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Well, my favorite reading in the Bible. But what is gentleness? And how do we cultivate more of it at work? So I just want you to reflect on yourself, the kind of life you're leading, uh, distresses. Some, are, uh, some of us have lost dear ones. Others are struggling with sickness in the family. Uh, there is pressure everywhere. Uh, at work, uh, there are uh, ethnic lacings in meetings. Uh, you know, and then you come out, matatus are hooting. You want to cross the street, the motorbike is just about to pass through you. Yeah. So what is gentleness, really? Uh, contrary to popular opinion, being gentle does not mean wimpy, apathetic, or just saying nothing when facing difficult people. No, it doesn't mean that. In cultivating the fruit of the Spirit, uh, one of my favorite writers, Christopher J. H. Wright, says gentleness can be strong, firm, and clear, but without vicious rage. Fellow Kenyans, how much vicious rage do you see on our television newscasts? I am so worried being a father of daughters when I see all these stories in the papers of uh, innocent or rather young women being slit their throats to death by vicious men. I don't know, when I tell people when I was growing up, they say, oh, you didn't have social media, you didn't have newspapers, oh, you didn't hear these things. Uh, I don't know. Something is wrong. So Wright asserts that gentleness is the ability to endure hostility and criticism without anger, blustery, self-defense or harsh and aggressive words. It means being is a human being with feelings too. So for me, I look at gentleness, gen, uh, gentleness as being strong, firm, and clear, but without vicious rage. Uh, the other day, I felt very frazzled one afternoon. Uh, Within the same two-hour window, I encountered loud and, uh, you know, even now people are talking of anti-vaccine comments that uh, people are now, more people are dying of heart attack because of the vaccines. Uh, and then you have these people who have very strong opinions about uh, in favor of COVID vaccinations. But you know how desperate we were for those vaccines not so long ago. And uh, if you ask me, I think they have worked. If if we are walking alive, some of us today without masks and without hearing so-and-so has died, so-and-so has died, there are no uh, ventilators and so on. And so we, I have I've also had a host of comments from both maskers and non-maskers. There are people who are still wearing masks by the religiously. On each side of the debate, people are they are anything but gentle. Me, yeah, I thought it would be very gentle, thanking God to have allowed us to jump that crevice of COVID and in turn turn our hearts to our departed relatives and friends who succumbed to that dreaded COVID. 
So I found my own blood pressure rising and uh, sadly felt less gentle and more prickly in response. Uh, so how do we cultivate my class? How do we cultivate more gentleness as Christians, as believers, as a value-based community? First and foremost, we must recall how central this virtue of gentleness is to Jesus' own character. I, I also struggle. I would like to be more gentle. That's why sometimes uh, well, in views within my family, everybody says, Dad, you are too soft. Uh, you know, you, you keep, these people keep doing this and you keep helping them and doing that. You know, they don't know where I'm coming from. Christ said to weary laborers, Take my yoke upon you and lean uh, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. I hope you know what the yoke is. Uh has call it Mujoki, this one that holds two animals together. But one of those animals, by the way, is Jesus, the other one is you. Matthew eleven twenty nine in gentle and lowly. Again, when you have time, uh, pick up this book by Dan Otland. Asserts that toil flows from fellowship with the living Christ, who's transcending, defining reality, is gentle and lowly. By the way, it is in those lowly places that you encounter God. So when somebody thinks he has really put you in that lowly place by cheating you, by abusing you, by disrespecting you if it's a child or a brother or a sister, uh, <laughs> that's the best place to be. Because he astounds and sustains us with his endless kindness. Notice Jesus' unique, by the way, I'm taking a little longer because this is part of leadership. As a leader, this is part of what is expected of you. So we are doing an experiential devotion related to leadership. So notice Jesus' unique self-description of his own heart. Then catch his personalized call to join him. Uh, Jesus lovingly calls us to work like he was. Yes. So we cultivate more gentleness as we intentionally aim to toil more closely yoked with Jesus. Uh, you can't go very far. You are digging the same depth. You are moving the same speed. You are sweating the same amount. So what does working with Jesus taking his yoke look like? His present day disciples can learn his heart and ways by deliberate asking is what I'm about to say or do truly the gentle, humble, kind response like Jesus would express. This necessitates showing, slowing down, remembering how gentle Christ has been towards us. And then we ponder and plan for what the gentle expression will be toward the person or scenario in your path. I am praying, I am asking you, that one of the biggest weapons to work with on this earth is gentleness. And doesn't mean you are wimpy. No. You can be firm, but you can be gentle. Mm. Uh, I'm just about to finish. Gentle towards others refreshes us too. Note Jesus' promise. Rest 
for your souls. So when we take his easy yoke, the stress and the fatigue will subside. Iyo asira mnabebana kwa wengine mwache. Iyo chuki ya ukabila. Iyo fikra mbayo unafika kiwango ya kwamba haujali maisha ya wengine wapende wasipende uwache wilana knew his heart of humility tenderness and kindness for us and we learn better how to express this gentleness towards others as we learn his rhythms and trust his ways we find rest humility first peter chapter 5 verse, verse 5 to 6 put on the apron of humility so that god may exalt you in due, due time and that indeed god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble fast paced make it happen lead us my still say, okay, gentleness is great at home and at church, but no way, uh, but no way it, it will work at work. In taking your soul to work, another book, Paul Stevens and Alvin Ang shared helpful light. And what did they say? Such gentleness requires a profound respect for the personal dignity of the other. A gentle person studiously avoids any coercion, intimidation, or threats. If possible, he or she might seek to change a wrong attitude through a kind act or a persuasive word, but a gentle person will refuse to force his or her hand against another person's will. So the other day, I was very upset with my cafeteria staff. And I called a meeting at 6 a.m. Everybody had to be in the hall. Because they were actually causing intimidation to the administration of the university by not serving fresh meals to my students. Those were acts of arrogance. And I had to be firm, but considerate. So a gentle person seeks to move at the pace of another person's readiness to make changes or embrace a goal. This is exactly the kind of person you like to have as your boss or your leader. Self-assured, he or she empowers you in a way that's, that's, that is suited to your needs. And as leaders, please note, uh, students of leadership, notice the blend of strength, confidence, and kindness. Strength, confidence, and kindness. Deep down, we all know how good it is to work with and for such gentle people. Cultivating greater gentleness is essential for greater fruitfulness and flourishing. When you want to become that leader we are looking for in you. So humble gentleness is in short supply amidst our desperate days. In the 2021 coming up fire swamp of COVID and what has followed us back to back. What if we, if we look anew at Jesus' character? Let's recall how his gentleness has abundantly blessed us. Then let's aim to share Jesus' style gentle responses with our co-workers, clients, family, and other business contacts this week and into our future. I don't know uh, whether any of us are in fire swamps. I don't know. 
whether any of us are in fire swamps. And uh, you are you are so <laughs> short fused and uh, prickly that you can almost blow up. Please remember Galatians 5, 22, 23. Uh, very few reactions to this, but this is part of our devotion, but part of leadership. The floor is open. Yes, Florence. Uh, thank you, Prof, for sharing this. I was there towards the end of 2023 uh, because there was a lot of pressure. My health was not doing well. I was not mm -hmm. having the support I felt I needed at home. Like everything was almost caving in. And I thought, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to bust. Mm -hmm. And um, just having been home most of uh, January and most of February, uh, as I recuperate, has helped me, you know, figure out and unpack things that uh, shouldn't really have been, I shouldn't be uh, short fused about, and things mm -hmm. that, you know, separating the non issues from, from the real issues and mm -hmm. seeing how when I get back to work, some of the things I need to navigate. And they all border around people not taking responsibility and doing what they're supposed to do. And then everything falling back to you because as a leader, the back stops with you. Yet the person who is supposed to do their work, they just, you know, they're just walking in and walking out and taking a salary. And so mm -hmm. it had pushed me to the wall. But mm -hmm. just taking time to, sometimes just withdrawing and taking time to reflect will help, will help you as a leader, which has helped me to realize this one, I shouldn't have been gone off like that. This one, there's another way of approaching this particular person. There's another way of motivating uh, to get the results that I need. So thank mm. you for sharing. Okay. Yeah, very good. Uh, and that's 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 leadership. <laughs> it's even, it's even uh, how can I say, maybe we shouldn't even think of it in terms of leadership, but just as a, as a tool for living gentleness and i want you to to look around you to reflect in the many moments that we encounter in our lives where we are navigating relational fire swamps all over the place any other comment before we uh we go to we are wrapping up research methods uh this week so that we can now start our proposal writing. So today we are very easy class. Uh, Nenlo, Othello. Thank you, Prof. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to everyone. All who are participating in our class. To prof. I look at the title and it's very interesting. Uh, if I get the interpretation right, I'm looking at two scenarios which are diametrically opposed to one another, fire and swamps. Those two, they are like electricity and water, yet they operate most of the time together. So it's a kind of contradictions that we have seen there. It, it actually gives us the meaning of what pressure is two things that are opposed to one another and they are coming together. So it gives us the meaning of what pressure is. I was doing a devotion and it says that your true inner self will come out when you are under pressure. People will see your true self, the character that is you will come out when you are under pressure. That's the time people get to know your real self. This is a situation that we face all the time in our day-to-day -day living. And we have seen Jesus put on this to show, to give us the example. He put on the human flesh. He came in the human flesh, which is loaded down with all kinds of things in the world, the sin of the world. 
So Jesus took this and to show us the example that it can be done. People can be gentle, one in the human flesh, because it is where now we get all this the pressure that we are talking about. And so now Jesus has given us the way, he has shown us the way. If we look to him, we are not going to sink like it happened to Peter. When he took off his eye from Jesus, he started sinking in the water. So we have to keep our focus on Jesus to give us that power to overcome the problems that we face in life. That's my tip. Thank you. Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, and I think the uh, Paul Amata, but before Paul, I think all of us are trudging through a messy model as we attempt to re-engage <laughs> with all these things, work, unique schedules, people's moods, the economy. Uh, by the way, the the you know, me and you know COVID is still around, it's still very visible. So we are going through all these things. Amat Paul. Thank you, Prof, and uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. I want to say that uh, I think being gentle is not easy. And uh, gentleness is always on test, it's always put on test, especially uh, maybe from all corners of life. Gentleness is always put on test. And my, my, my thought would be that uh, to be gentle, you really need to see God's grace. Because when you just walk around, uh, some of the, your gentleness is always on test, either intentionally or otherwise. Because all over, people have pressure, they can supply that pressure to your side. You also have your own, and you need to respond in a gentle way. So it's not easy to be gentle. And uh, we need to be intentional as Christians or leaders to always seek God guidance in all that we are doing, to just to maintain that the, 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 the gentleness in us. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh... May we continue to ask God to really immerse us in the fruit of the Spirit. But I would like you to practice this. I'm challenging some of you. Uh, one of the things I'll cover tomorrow, not tomorrow, on Saturday, uh, as part of leadership, is emotional intelligence. And... Uh, uh, cover it in a way where we turn it into practice. And, you know, you can just resolve that uh, I will not cause pain to anybody this year. And you pray about it. And uh, you'll be surprised how that will transform your life and your relationships. If people choose to cause pain to you, uh, that's their business. So I, I really would like to challenge all of you. Um, so, uh, yeah, yes, 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 Jabet, yes. Um, I would like to wrap up research methods. I can't say I've covered all that I wanted to cover in the way I wanted to cover, but my consolation is that I'll be teaching you with the, the team you have on Friday uh, what we call disciplined inquiry. Uh, that means you now begin to do proposed writing into your various disciplines. So that when I'm teaching assumptions or when I'm teaching validity or reliability, when I'm teaching limitations and delimitations, there'll be discipline specific. And we shall be using those examples to reinforce the general principles we have learned in research methods. 
I have submitted to my colleagues that uh, uh, perhaps uh, since I came to Daystar, uh, this is the only time I have been given a class and given sufficient time to to take them to where I want them to go. Uh, at Mori, I had that latitude because masters and PhD classes were taught on Saturdays and Sundays. So in Moi, I had the latitude, and uh, we did a very good job. In Daysta, uh, the classes are programmed, and they have all kinds of alternatives. They 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 will say Ayiro and Onyango will teach research methods. So I come in and teach literature review. Onyango comes in to teach, and then uh, after two three weeks, uh, you find. You haven't covered much, and the term is over, and then you have to grade the people. So we are trying to change things, and uh, I'm glad uh, this class uh, is a pilot of how I would like us to teach not just research methods, but all the other courses at master's and PhD. Uh, I, I am very concerned about uh, my PhD classes, the ongoing PhD classes. So I'm hoping God will give me strength to mount some seminars for them to brush out. So in other words, I'm saying we have done adequate work and uh, we, are, we are not there. And you won't be there even after your PhD. You won't be there until you start, you know, publishing, practicing, doing research, writing papers. Then all these things will come uh, to pass and you'll be that person we are looking for. But um, it starts with a strong foundation, a very strong foundation, so that even when a term is spoken of, you are not like a stranger. You, you've heard about it. Maybe you don't know what it is. You can go and revise, but you kind of know what it is all about. So I would like to, to use this lesson today to really be just meandering around as uh, I, I close in on research methods, I'll be want, I want to know where the librarians are because I also wanted to run over the APA 7th edition, how you're going to do citations, how you're going to do referencing, automated referencing, so that as you write your work, the references are automatically being picked at the end of your document. So by the time you finish the work, you have all the references, and now you just begin to uh, weed them out, the ones you, you the ones you have abandoned and the ones you want to use. So we, we'll come to that later. So I would like to uh, talk about mixed methods research very briefly. And... Uh, what I want to do is um, not really teach mixed methods research in detail, but uh, share the essentials of mixed methods. And then uh, hopefully many of you uh, will... Uh, would pick it and uh, you know, as an approach to research methods, and then we shall we shall be able to build it further. There's a book I've written, uh, which is actually my essentially my inaugural lecture uh, disposition on mixed methods research. And I'll be encouraging uh, you people to uh, look at it. And uh, keep it in your library. When you need to make reference, you are able to use it. Um, <clears throat> So uh, 
what I want to do is uh, most important positioning myself or yourself in mixed methods research. Uh, give a definition of mixed methods research and steps in the process of, de of designing mixed methods research as an overview. But uh, the details we shall go in with those of you who will opt for mixed methods. Then we shall bring out some of these aspects. If you are in mixed methods, you view research as a set of interactive components, not always linear. So you don't you don't think in terms of uh, qualitative or quantitative. You focus on rigorous data collection and analysis because you are going to do both quantitative and qualitative analysis. You work as an applied research meth methodist. That means you, you are applying qualitative and quantitative to give you a richer outcome. So when you are positioning yourself in mixed methods, you are trained in quantitative You are self-trained in qualitative. You are a first-generation methods writer, like most of you are. You can position yourself as a consultant on mixed methods, on projects. And that's how I have made my money. So when you see a Euro driving an expensive car, uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, my dream is to drive a Mercedes one of these days. I don't know whether I'll ever manage. It is because of mixed methods, consultant, and statistics. And uh, you work on proposals. You help people develop proposals as I'm going to do with you. Now, a few more thoughts. I have read very many mixed methods research books until, in fact, I should have actually planted mine now here. Here. Until I had the courage to come out with my own version of mixed methods. So what is mixed methods? How would you combine two types of data? Qualitative data, text data, quantitative numeric data. So this is collected from interview, uh, you transcript, you transcribe, sorry. You have observations and field notes. You have pictures. How, how would you combine two types of data? Qualitative and quantitative. Um, just a minute, let me bring this down. Uh, so how would you, what is the framework for viewing perspectives on mixed methods? Remember, quantitative, qualitative, 
you're going to get data that is numerical and um, data that is in text form. One is the philosophy is positivist. The other one is constructivist. So you must be pragmatic to bring those two philosophies together. So quantitative data, qualitative data. And then you mix those two and you have mixed methods. So qualitative data, a method, uh you have mixed methods and, and and i want you to note this i don't know how many of you are able to see this that um quantitative data qualitative data mixed methods you are actually dealing with a method and a methodology and uh, and then you have a paradigm perspective, and this is the pragmatic, pragmatism paradigm. So I want to pause there. And, and this is the use of mixed methods in other designs. I want, you to, I want to pause there and uh, invite reactions. Madiang, thank you for raising your hand. <laughs> um hi uh prof yes yes oh, uh, yeah i look forward to riding inside your mercedes benz so <laughs> <laughs> now um <laughs> i raised the hand before that because now you've talked of method and methodology which uh, mm -hmm. i recall you when you started the classes last year you also mentioned but uh, about two slides uh, back there is a go point. Back. Yeah. Why don't you to go back? It's okay. Uh, oh, okay. So, so you've written somewhere there, and I wanted to know whether it is um, deliberate or not. Back again. Yeah. No, no, back again. Yeah. Um, Positioning. Yes, 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 yes. Oops. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Um. Bullet number three. So there you have method and methodology. Uh, mm. Have you deliberately written this research methodologist as opposed to methodologist? Yeah, that is deliberate. Okay, okay, that now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is deliberate, yeah. Uh, that's important for me because I, I thought it's a typo, but now when you moved to the slide you are in, I wanted to know if it's deliberate so that um, yeah. I can yeah. back to you. Okay. Uh, what I, where I wanted you all to put your minds is here. Remember today we have a very relaxed class. We are just walking through uh, land we plowed early enough. So we are replowing because we want to, to plant. We are just about to start planting. So can we have some some observations? Questions and, and so on. So you should be able to By the way, which is this paradigm perspective? Which which is this paradigm perspective that I'm chasing?
Uh, people online, people have gone quiet. Excuse me, Dr. Prof. Prof, can I just make a comment on that one where we're talking about paradigm perspective? Yeah. Mm. Okay, maybe I think our class is for us. We make mistakes, we correct. <laughs> so I'm looking at paradigm perspective as a trajectory, the direction mm. in which you are taking. That's I'm looking at. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I saw somebody's hand. Was it uh, two participants? Uh, very good. Uh, Madian and um, uh, no, Madian. Somebody else had their hand up. They brought it down very quickly. Is there anybody else to react to this? Yes. Mm. Uh, I think the paradigm perspective is the the one we talked about, the, the two main paradigms, which were positivist and mm. the interpretive one, whereby the positivism uh, was majorly talking about the quantitative data and then the interpreted uh, interpret. Hmm? Interpretism was talking about yes yeah interpretivist was focusing on understanding the subjective experience through the qualitative method. So putting the quantitative and the qualitative method are we, are we walking into here? Yeah. Which paradigm perspective are we walking into here? in mixed methods. No. Yes. Are we talking about um, pragmatism? Yes, it is pragmatism, pragmatist. Oh, Prof, my hand was still up and that's what I wanted to say. So let me lower it now. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 All right, let's go. Sylvanius, Getare, you have something to ask? No, I just finished talking. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and All right. I, um, before yeah. that, Professor, I was just trying mm. to think about this mixed method. So I was trying to relate to like what I'm doing when I'm teaching. Like you find you are teaching a topic that mixes all the other topics and involves all the other subjects. So mm. I was trying to think and relate in that perspective. Mm. Yeah, but uh, remember, uh, I told you when you look at my, let me, just a minute, I'm looking for my, uh, two participants have raised their hands. Let me look at them. Cindy, Emma, tell us. Yeah. Um. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Mine. Mine is a question. I'm getting a little bit confused between uh, paradigm perspective and methodology. Could you please mm. explain briefly what's the difference between the two? The methodology is uh, what you see at the tip of the iceberg. The paradigm is uh, everything. What is hidden of the iceberg and what you see. In other words, a paradigm will entail the philosophical underpinnings of the research. So it is the, the continuum. So the method is what you see. The method is what you see at the tip. The method is either you're, you're going to do qualitative or quantitative data collection or analysis. The methodology is the continuum. The paradigm is what is hidden 
down in the iceberg. That's where we have positivism, constructivism, pragmatism. It is, it is what actually constitutes the bulk of the research. Because if you don't get it right, if, you, if your paradigm perspective is not right, then all these things will crumble. I want to repeat. The tip of the iceberg, what you see is the method. So method quantitative. Method would be data collection, sampling, you know, all those things. Sampling, data collection, data analysis. The paradigm, the foundation, is the philosophy. Is it positivist? Is it interpretivist? Or is it constructivist? Or is it pragmatic? When you have the philosophy plus the methods, you have the methodology as a continuum. I hope that makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you. A mixed methods researcher, Ochami, please pick it up. Uh, I mean, your hand is up. Ochami. Thank you, Prof. We we also have the transformative paradigm. And uh, I think there's yeah. a very thin line between uh, transformative paradigm and the pragmatic paradigm. Yeah, uh, transformative is uh, is a subset. You know, there are many subsets I haven't gone into. We'll pick those at PhD level. Uh, for example, when I talk of qualitative research, there are so many other strategies inside there. There is uh, phenomenology, there is case study, there is ethnography, there is advocacy. There are so many other paradigms within there which we are not getting in at this level. And similarly with pragmatism, but I'm glad you're thinking ahead. A mixed methods researcher collects both quantitative and qualitative data, mixes them mixes them at the same time, if they do it at the same time concurrently or one after the other sequentially. So I can walk into a school with a questionnaire and collect quantitative data as I do the interviews. That is concurrent. But I can also start in a school and collect quantitative data, performance, number of teachers, uh, number of students, the subjects they're doing. And then I go away and analyze that data. Then I can come back and do interviews based on information I could not get in the quantitative approach. So that is sequential. You get, you do quantitative or qualitative first, you analyze, then you come back and you do qualitative or quantitative. Emphasizes both equally and unequally. So uh, there are people who will do a quantitative study and then just come with one open-ended question for interview. So for example, if I was looking at the performance at Nakuru High School, over the last five years, uh, between the girls and the boys, in the sciences and the humanities, in the languages, and the leadership in the school, that whole study quantitatively, and then just come to meet the board of governors to tell me what they make of the way the school is performing. So that is uh, primarily a quantitative study with uh, a very small segment of qualitative. 
But I can also come with uh, open-ended questions, ask students, ask teachers, ask workers, ask what. And then I, I don't even come to the school. I go and look for secondary data on performance in KC, KCSC in the last 10 years. So that is primarily a qualitative study. So I'm saying we emphasize both equally or unequally. That's what I'm talking about. So this is the definition. Mis mixed methods research is both a method and a methodology. Hey. Uh, Onojua, I, I, I would feel, I'll feel massacred if somebody is in a Euros class does not understand the difference between methodology and method. I would feel very, very upset. Methodology is the whole blueprint right from the philosophy, the assumptions, and the methods. Methods are ways of conducting the research. So methods relate to population, sampling, instrumentation, whether you have interviews, schedules, or open-ended questions, data collection, data analysis. Those are methods. When you add on the assumptions and the philosophy, the paradigms, then it becomes a methodology. So, Mixed methods research is both a method and a methodology for collect, conducting research that involves collecting, analyzing, and integrating quantitative and qualitative research in a single study or a, long, a longitudinal program of inquiry. Time over a long period of time. So I could be studying the influence of culture on the Maasai girl child over a period of five years. Or I can walk into Narok Ole 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 Tip Tip Girls and uh, walk in, give questionnaires, give interviews, and walk out. That is a cross sectional approach. You collect data at one point in time and you go away. Or you can stay there for a long time. The purpose of this form of research is that both qualitative and qualitative, quantitative research in combination provide a better understanding of the research problem. Very important. In fact, we say we do this to cause triangulation, to prove to reinforce. So it is better than either research approach alone. It is better than doing quantitative alone or qualitative alone. A better understanding of a research problem. Madiang. Uh, yeah, so now, going back to your last uh, statement in, uh, in the previous slide, mm. um, it says, or issue, that either research approach alone would not probably be useful to them. Uh, there are some uh, research problems in your experience mm. that are mm. best tackled via mixed uh, methods and mm. not by either qualitative or quantitative uh, singly. 
Yeah, that that is now becoming the norm. That is now mm -hmm. is becoming the norm. For example, let me give you an example. And I'm giving everybody, not my dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was at Moore University, I I did um, we were about four four people teaching myself, uh, Professor To, Professor um, Boyd, and somebody else. About four people teaching research methods and statistics at the university. So we used to teach across schools. So in the school of medicine, and you can go to you can Google scholar. Go to Aero Lab and Google Scholar, and you'll see one of the studies that I supervised was for a medical doctor from the School of Medicine who was doing a master's, no, was doing a PhD. And uh, what we were doing is we were looking at uh, the prevalence of TB in Kericho County, or there, those sites. Bometo, Kericho County. We went and collected data with him, or he went and collected data. He was a medical doctor at, uh, at the provincial hospital in Nakuru. And, and collected data on the number of patients coming from that county who were on TB drugs. And uh, the number. And then worked, collected statistics from the clinics on the morbidity and mortality rates from those areas. How many people are dying? How many people are constantly sick of TB? And yet, they were on drugs. That was quantitative analysis. Quantitative analysis was saying They're not improving. So we then instigated a qualitative aspect. In other words, we walked into the sphere of mixed methods. And uh, we set out a questionnaire. And I remember a very strong quote from one of the mamas whose children had died, two of his, a, a girl in the home and a boy, and they had left behind grandchildren. And he, she was telling us they, they, they were getting rations from the hospital, food, rations, and drugs. It was a program. But she was saying she cannot imagine herself eating and her grandchildren are hungry. So what was she doing? She was not taking the drugs because she couldn't take the drugs on an empty stomach. Instead, she would allow the children to eat. So you see the qualitative aspect gave us an answer in a purely quantitative study. So to answer your question, they are purely scientific quantitative. But even if I come to your school, if you're a principal, and I want to look at the, the poor performance of English language in your school, I will come and do what is called action research. I'll sit in a school, in a class, and I'll see how the instruction of English is done, the, the teaching and the evaluation. I look at the number of books. I look at the qualification of the teacher and the engagement, the pedagogy the teacher is using. Really, that is not enough until I do an interview to know the entry behavior of those children. So even in this action research, I have to do both quantitative and qualitative. The magnitude I cannot say until you people go out in the field. Then we'll, we'll say whether this is a heavily quantitative or a very small segment of qualitative in the study. But then it is still mixed, whether you're using one ounce of qualitative or, 
uh, 10 kilos, it is still a mixed methods research. And uh, some words you'll have to learn, qual, qualitative, quant, quantitative. Any other worries? Any other questions? We are taking it easy. We are summing up. Good evening, Prof. Good, good evening. Who is that, please? This is Obadiah Bahizire. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, I have a few concerns regarding uh, uh, the mixed method. Huh? And number one goes like this. Might there be some uh, inconsistency uh, mm. in data collection or uh, uh, in in both uh, in both quantitative or uh, qualitative uh, qualitative methods huh? mm. uh, how would a researcher in this case because I think these are two methodologies that are being applied in one how can a researcher mitigate uh, uh, the inconsistency when they happen and uh, yet uh, they are doing or they're applying two methods mm -hmm. to conduct uh, the research. Number two, I'm um, talking about- pause, pause, there. No, pause there, let me answer that. Mm. In fact, the strength of mixed methods is that it, it, it eliminates in either of the approaches. In fact, the strength of mixed methods we say in research, it is a it is also called a triangulation method. So you 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 do a qualitative study, you then go to quantification, and you begin to see the the inconsistencies in the responses of the respondents in that school. Maybe they were fearing the principal, or they didn't just understand the question. So, because you are applying the two to one situation, they speak to each other and either strengthen or bring out the weaknesses. Number two. Okay, thank you. Number two, uh, it, uh, it's just out of curiosity. How now do you uh, manage the data integration? How do you integrate both data? Okay, I'm looking at it um, as uh, maybe you might need to give us a few examples if there might yeah, be yeah, a yeah. difference or um, uh, in terms of uh, administering the questionnaire uh, so that we may, we may see the real difference between the mixed and um, uh, these both uh, methods separately. But yeah, now my yeah. worry is uh, here at data integration. How do you integrate uh, the both data yeah. and uh, and have it as a whole? Yeah, we are coming to that. Good question. Good thinking. Those are very very intelligent questions you brought out. Uh, both of, but just know that uh, if there is any weakness in either of the two, we will uh, strengthen each other, and that is called triangulation, or we will expose the weakness. And now, how do we do the integration and the amalgamation is what I'm coming to. Okay, Prof, now to finish, uh, yeah. I was, I was, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit worried about uh, uh, the sampling method. Huh? Do we have yeah. uh, uh, what we can call a sampling method? That's a potential uh, sampling approach to mixed methods. No, this is this is. These are two methods, and, and I really want you to note this, and, and I'm, I'm happy with your questions, because that look at this uh, framework for viewing perspectives on mixed methods. There is quantitative data, there is qualitative data. So we have quantitative, we have qualitative. So the sampling will be quantitative here, Quantitative, you will do sampling of the population and you'll use a large sample. Here, you will do sampling, but you'll use a small sample. You'll use the information rich respondents. And then now you come down to, to mix those, those results as we're going to show. All right, let's move on. Excuse, excuse me, Prof, yeah. before you move on. 
Maybe it, okay. if we go to where we are starting from, just to uh, go back where you, you showed us the numbers and the text. Yes. When you are, you are combining the two, the numbers and the text. Now maybe this we, one. you will get a clearer picture. This one. It was where you showed us numbers, qualitative numbers ahead here, right here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This slide, are you talking about this slide? Yes, exactly, this slide. Now we show yeah. us where we are, we are, how we can go and do the both of these methods and combine them. Yeah, that's what we are coming to. Uh, don't worry too much about that because uh, I hope you know in this qualitative data, I'm going to do categories, I'm going to do themes. And here I'm going to do analysis, analysis, statistical analysis, and get statistical indices. For example, the F statistic, the T statistic, the Spearman's correlation. Whatever it tells me, I will relate it to the themes, and I'll be able to integrate and combine them. I'm just coming to that. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, look at this one. Collecting both quantitative and qualitative data. Quantitative data. This is qualitative data. So here, we have instruments, we have checklists, we have records. So we have tools for collecting quantitative data. Here, qualitative data, this one, we have interviews, of, we have observations, we have documents, we have audiovisual materials, like that. Collecting both quantitative and qualitative. So please walk with me, like that. Yeah, that. So you know the, the instruments for data collection. We have already covered that. Now, Qualitative and quantitative quantitative and qualitative data analysis. In quantitative data analysis, this one, you have this. You use statistical analysis uh, from description, from comparing groups, from relating variables. That's what we do there. In qualitative analysis, qualitative analysis. This one, we use text, images, coding, theme development, and related themes. This we did last time. I hope you can still remember. We did that last time. Yes. So we are, we are, we are just going down separate until we bring them together. Now we come here. This is what most of you have been asking. Mixing or linking data. And I want you to pay attention. I can converge data by doing qualitative analysis. And this is it. This one. Text, coding, themes. I have themes. Or I can have statistical analysis and uh, description comparison relating variables. I do the qual qualitative. I do the quant quantitative separately. I bring the results together and discuss them. But I can also connect data. So in your study, by the way, you will not tell me, and I, I want to make you stronger at master's going to PhD. You not tell me I used a mixed methods approach and stop there. You will tell me whether you converged your data, you connected your data, or you embedded your data in the mixed methods approach. So now, connecting data, you do qualitative analysis. You go and collect, do interviews in Kericho on, on TB, tuberculosis. 
you have collected data on tuberculosis, the prevalence, and you connect the two data and you give us your results. So you first do qual, then quant, then you give results. In converge, convergent approach, when you converge data, you do qual, you do quant simultaneously, you bring them together. Now, this one is very interesting. Embed the data. When you see quant, quant, if you want, quant, the smaller space is qual, which means you do your quantitative data. For example, you'll be standing outside Valley Road, main uh, Nairobi campus, and counting the number of vehicles going across the roundabout, and those that are shooting through the red lights, and those that are lorries, and those that are buses. You collect all that data, then you go to the traffic headquarters and interview the traffic commandant to tell you the situation of traffic flow in Nairobi. So that big quant, that, that big quant data or quant data, you will embed in it a little of qual by doing an interview or by doing something like going to the spinal injury hospital to interview one or two people on how, what kind of accident they were involved in if it was within Nairobi city and you embed it. I want to pause there for questions. That, that school in Narok, you know, it was not Ole Tipis girls. It was Ole Tip Tip, the one I used to go to and mentor. Ole Tip Tip girls. Uh, Taslin Otieno. Uh, just for clearance, in embedded data, we mm. carry out one, like uh, if you're doing a qualitative uh, research, we do it first and then uh, if we want more information, like on numbers, now we add the other to uh, uh, complement it. Yeah, yeah, and and to embed, eh? to embed ni kufichi andani, ama siyo hivo. Ndiyo. Yeah, so if you are a qualitative researcher, qual, your qual data will be very big, but you will embed in it the quant or the quant the quantitative data to give explanation. You see, like this one is what we did in Kericho. The quant data, the quantitative data was huge. We wanted to know the number of patients who were on TB, we wanted to know morbidity, mortality, we wanted to know the drugs that are sent out, we wanted to know the rations of food. All these were quantities measurable. But then we needed the voices, the voices. So we went and did a small uh, interview in the affected homes, about 10 homes, and we embedded their, their responses in terms of quotes, sometimes verbatim, sometimes uh, we, we paraphrased and embedded it in that quantitative data. Macho. I think a prof, I'm just adding on to what you said about the how uh, to embed the data. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That the qualitative quantitative, sorry, uh, offers you the numbers. And sometimes when you're like for example, when you're talking to policymakers to make yeah. a particular change or to increase budgetary allocation, yeah. the voices yeah. speak to them more than the numbers. So yes, the numbers are there. Yes, yeah. 100 yeah. women are taking uh, the Women Enterprise Fund every month. Yeah. But but you want also to infuse the experience so that they realize 
is digitization of the Women Enterprise Fund making sense to women or it's not making sense to women? So that Precisely. it helps you really explain your data, your quantitative data. Yeah. 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 That data, you must bring in tears. You must bring in agitation. You must bring in frustration. Figures might say very few are actually succeeding, but without the voice to reinforce that, uh, you might not get the impact desired. And also, just learn that we are embedding that data to 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 do what to triangulate to see whether the voices are explaining why the uptake of that fund is not as good as it should be i hope we are making sense of this uh paul amata yes papa my question, I don't know if you talked about, but uh, this is my question. This mm. embedding, is it uh, intentional or it comes like uh, an afterthought? No, it is intentional. In fact, you are driven to go and look for some more data. Okay. Yeah, and sometimes it, it is towards the end of the study. And somebody might ask, did you get the views? Did you get the views of uh, the people who don't belong from that area? Yeah. Did you get the views? Or, or this fund is being politicized. Good. All right. Uh, Before typical... you progress. Okay. Uh, now I can see we are going to spend our whole lesson today on mixed methods. I thought I would run away and do other things, but go ahead. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm now looking at um, uh, the validity and uh, reliability concerns. Huh? And yeah. uh, my question goes as follows. Huh? I, mm. I try to think uh, that uh, the data set for qualitative and quantitative are different. Huh? Now I'm looking... Yeah. What 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 uh, would a researcher do when there is a gap, huh? a gap in the missing missing figure in terms of data set? For example, uh, uh, from the quantitative, I have a population of uh, maybe 50, 50 participants. Huh? I have 50 mm. participants. But uh, on the other side, the ones who are able or who are willing to... Um, give me uh, the data from uh, the qualitative aspect are less than that what, what would the researcher do in this in this in this in this time how would um, they bridge the gap yeah but there's no gap uh, um, I, I i want you to note that in a quantitative study the sample is large and because the sample is large the sampling error statistically is reduced. In a qualitative study, in a qual study, and therefore the data, you are targeting information-rich respondents. It, it is deliberate. It is purposive. They are going to give you that data. And, and, and so you're going to categorize and you're going to theme that data. And we know how to establish the validity of their pronouncements either by taking it to experts or comparing it with the previous data. Once the validity measures are done in each, you can cause discussion. But uh, let, let's, let's, let's hold on, and I'm, I'm really excited about the, the, the response. It's very intelligent from everybody. And that tells me a lot of you are going to do mixed methods. Let us hold on. Let me run through this. But... And then I'm going to give you sample papers. And we see how data is analyzed. When we get into discipline inquiry. Okay. Uh, uh, 
uh, there is two more hands up. <laughs> uh, Madiang and Osanya. Let's go. Uh, sorry, and I know you are impatient to go to go to go ahead, but you have no, mentioned I'm that you will give us. Yeah, I'm yeah. impatient. We can spend the whole evening here and stop here. But ah. have you not? We have only done twelve slides out of forty-six. Ah, so I'm not so you, you, you've mentioned about uh, giving us sample papers, eh? and mm. I have remembered at the beginning of this class. You had mm -hmm. mentioned uh, the Ugandan lady who had uh, conducted a certain research and you encouraged us that when we reach this point, we make sure we read her work. I don't know yeah. whether this is ringing a bell. Yeah, yeah. I hope yeah. Uh, you can link us to her work so that uh, we read it. Thanks, Prof. Yes, Over to you. Madiang, you work for the security forces. <laughs> Uh, pass. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, you are very particular. Osanya. Prof, uh, Prof, this yeah, is, is this Osanya? I also want to request. No, uh, Osanya first. Osanya. Good evening, Prof. Yes. Uh, I'm just wondering what happens with the meta-analysis with the mixed methods. Hmm. Now, <laughs> Meta-analysis, we are going to look at the results of many, many researches in an area. So like if it is tuberculosis in a developing country, we are going to get studies from across East Africa, for example, uh, in our databases from the internet. And... Uh, we will look at all those studies and then establish an inclusion and exclusion criteria. Once we get the studies we want to include in our research, we then use the findings of these studies as our primary data and then engage statistics. We shall come out with the variables that are significant on TB prevalence in East Africa without us going out there with instruments to collect data. Will we stick to mixed methods alone? But we could just be looking at TB in the region. And so we, we take all the studies, quantitative, qualitative, and mixed methods, then we eliminate qualitative because meta-analysis, the tools for analysis are statistical. I'm very excited at the type of questions I'm getting today. By the way, this class is surprising me. I didn't, uh, yeah, in a positive way. Typical situations in which mixed methods is used to compare results from quantitative and qualitative research, to use qualitative research to, ex to help explain quantitative findings, to explore using qualitative research, and then to generalize findings to a large population using quantitative research, to develop an instrument because none are available or useful. Ladies and gentlemen, some of these slides are very significant because when you are talking to me and saying you want to adapt, asking you, what is your motive? Is it to compare results? Is it to use qualitative research to help explain quantitative findings? Is it to explore using qualitative research and then to generalize findings to a large population using quantitative research? Or are you in a situation where you want to develop an instrument because none are available in either of the two paradigms? A slide like this one is also very useful. When you are thinking of your mixed methods research, I want to know whether you're going to converge 
connect or embed data. When you do this, somebody sees a brilliant mind. Somebody sees somebody who understands mixed methods. So don't just say, I'm going to use mixed methods. You can see the intricacies that are, are inherent with this method. Now, let me blow this up. You see, look at this. What is the reason for using mixed methods? One, the insufficient argument, either quantitative or qualitative, may be insufficient by itself. Example, the TB case in Kericho. There is the multiple angles argument. Quantitative and qualitative approaches provide different pictures, different scenarios. The more evidence, the better argument. Combined quantitative and qualitative provides more evidence community of practice argument that's where hero now sits by the way i i, I am i'll be uh, giving some of you who who will then when we get into discipline inquiry those of you who use mixed methods i'm a member of the it is called the mixed methods research association the mmra is a global association where you have um, the best brains in research, Cresswell and the others. So we are a community of practice argument. We, mixed methods researchers, are now convinced more than ever before that we present a, a better argument. We give multiple angles argument we increase the sufficiency of the research findings. So, so some of you who will would be excited, you know, this excite, excitement, very excited about mixed methods. I have tons of articles, the latest, and we have conferences. I attend uh, on webinars and so on. I also attend physically. We we will introduce you to this with the hope that you'll move on to become, to do your PhD in the area of mixed methods, but also become part of the community, the scholarly community of mixed methods researchers. So the community of practice argument, mixed methods may be the preferred approach within a scholarly community. You know, we can just decide. We are a gated community. No, we can just decide we're going to build a wall around us. And this is these are our beliefs. Then there is the eager to learn argument. Just it is the latest methodology. Why are you sitting in quarrel? This is this is the in thing, you know. And it is the intuitive. This is what I love most. It is the intuitive argument, the language, the the, the teachers of the the language teachers, not teachers of lang teachers of language. I think, yeah, the teachers of language, the intuitive argument. It mirrors real life. Real life is not just figures. Othello, I saw your hand up. Thank you, Pro. Uh, from what I've seen, uh, mm. I think now you are molding successor to be versatile in mixed methods who are able to mm. sit on a panel and they are not mm. going to be taken by one method, qualitative or qualitative, because they have mm. lenses of both. So I, mm. I'm looking at it here that you are, you are, you are bringing up versatile people to be in the research community. Thank you. Yeah. 
Uh, very good. Any other reaction to this? By the way, this this is these are very pregnant statements, huh? For a researcher. And so when you are doing your defense, you know you can I don't want you to mesmerize the panel, but you you can you can convince the panel that you have a very deep insight into mixed methods. When you say I'm trying to, to counter the insufficient argument, the multiple angles argument, the more evidence, the better argument, the community of practice argument, the, learn, the eager to learn argument, and the intuitive argument. Some of them will be mesmerized, and they'll start telling you, tell us about the intuitive argument. Okay, sir, I saw your hand up. Prof, uh, I am just smiling as you explain because, because mm -hmm. right from when we began talking about research mm -hmm. and uh, the way you were so passionate about um, mixed methods, mm -hmm. actually I had written it somewhere that uh, I will have to ask so that you deeply go into mixed. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when you, you were explaining the statement and you talked of you want a 13 word problem statement yeah. and um, touching of mixed method and you, you, you emphasized that you would want to see people i think i am one of the the first people that uh, would want to do this and so mm -hmm. i am just my from I'm your like side it looks very easy and I'm, I'm liking it thank you yeah i i i, I would like to the whole thing is I'm indoctrinating you into, into this club of research methods so that you are indoctrinated. You, you don't imagine research methods is difficult. You know me, I'll not do mm -hmm. quantitative. I'll not do, I just do qualitative. You know, qualitative is easy. You just interview and then you just, I hope you saw that it is very, 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 very hard to 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 get to the theming level in qualitative research and and create argument around them so yeah it's not what you imagine yeah all right designing a mixed method study let me see this has over short designing a mixed method study there are the preliminary considerations you creating a title. Title in a Euros class will not go beyond 15 words. That is a piece of clothes you have to wear. Not more than 15 words. Best 12, 13. When I see a very crisp, sharp topic, I know this is a good mind. But I have seen, when I go to defenses, topics of 22, 25 words, amorphous ambiguous, cumbersome, frustrating, tiring. You can't even see the variables in that study. Posing a general question, listing the types of data collection and analysis, making explicit your worldview. What is your worldview? I'm pragmatic. I am rational. I, I appreciate both types of paradigms. You identify your research design. You draw a figure of your design. You write a purpose statement. You write your research questions. And uh, you have a complete, not complete, a, com a completed research plan or a competitive research plan. Uh, designing a mixed method study. By the way, uh, the leadership and policy class, you don't design these things from heaven. No. You look at studies that have been done. You look at you look at 
the assumptions, you look at the validity and the reliability, you look at how they have framed the problem statement, you look at the type of data analysis that they engaged with, then, then, then you just walk out with the design. So it comes out of familiarization and reading. Now, preliminary considerations before you begin the design. Prof, please. Yes, go on. Who is that? Uh, just a minute, kindly go back to the slide. Just one minute, kindly. Oh, that's okay. There's something. Okay. I want to check. Ah, yeah. yeah. This one? Um, this, this one? On yeah. designing, on designing. Yeah. Yeah, is it up? Is, are you seeing it? This yes, one? Yes, this one. Yes, yeah. let me take a snap. Oh, okay. Thank, okay. thank you. You can move then. All right. Okay. Before you begin to design, uh, you know the elephant in the room for everybody, the research problem. Fit the problem to mix methods arguments. You must have access to both qualitative and quantitative data. You must know your background and resources. And you must have a receptive audience. By the way, we don't do research just to write theses. Hey, Macho, we do research as consultants to make money to drive Mercedes or to buy two acres of land in Kitale or a quarter an acre in Lukenya without people saying you have stolen their money. So you have to be part of the community of scholars where people are convinced if it is so-and-so who has conducted this research, then it must hold to be valid. Carolyn Ndunga is asking, is mixed in mixed methods, do we use the research questions or hypothesis? You will use both because it is quant and qual. Yeah. You'd use both, my dear. The research questions for qual and the hypothesis for quant. And again, you will... I, I, the way I teach disciplined inquiry, I know, I know you have started with uh, Dr. Mark and the team. The way I will teach you disciplined inquiry is through case studies, looking at examples. That's how I'll teach uh, the disciplined inquiry, looking at examples, looking at actual researches that have been done and seeing the methodology and seeing the methods. Yes. Somebody wanted to say something? Okay. So sometimes my daughter tells me, Dad, me, I want, I don't know. How will I, how did you do this? How did you do this? Uh, punishing myself, Ruth. Punishing myself. Hours and hours. This book you people are using now in leadership uh, during the COVID two years, I did not leave my study where I'm sitting now. Hours and hours and hours. And then you get good money. You know, you know, it's good also to get a check of 20 million or 15 million. Then you... yeah. And uh, hotels and what another two million. Then you remain with 12 million. Then you can buy a flat in Kelelesho. It's a long call. You know, I'm feeling so excited. 
that uh, we have not moved fast in these uh, mixed methods because now I know it is sinking. Yeah. And tomorrow, I, I don't know whether the library have finished. If they haven't, then on Saturday, we will continue with mixed methods uh, as we, we are winding up research so that next week then we go into leadership. I want there's a bit of policy I want to bring into that leadership. Uh, examples of policy papers, cabinet papers, but uh, we'll, we'll see how we go about it. Kree, um, Madiang, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I had my hand up at your 20 million up. I just want mm. to request that you add me on your et al in those consultancies of 20 million. Asante san. You are a very cheeky guy. Eh? Creating a working title, writing the title short, you must have a topic, participants, include the words mixed methods. You 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 are neutral, you are neither quan or qual, quan quantitative, qual qualitative. Explain more that. Yeah, that what I, what I'm saying is that in your topic, therefore, you can't say a quantitative or a qualitative study. You can't. You have to be neutral because you are you are you you are standing across this continuum of uh, research methods from qual to quant. But you are not in the middle. Remember, you're not in the middle. You can be in the middle, but you can be leaning towards qual or leaning towards quant. Pose the general question to be answered. Write it as a question. Look to see how it is phrased. Make sure that it is specific enough and focused. Ask yourself, when I end the study, what question would like to have answered? Would I like to have answered? By the way, this is the difference between me writing a proposal for funding and you. I always make sure that it is specific enough and focused. Yeah, that's the difference. And that's what I'll be looking for in your titles. List your type of data collection, review, closed-ended, quantitative, we've done that, instruments, behavioral checklist records, qualitative data, open-ended, this is closed, this is open-ended, interviews, observations, documents, audiovisual materials. Activity, list your sources of data, Quantitative sources of data, qualitative sources of data. So these are fundamentals. List your approach to data analysis. How would you analyze your data? Qualitative analysis, statistical description, comparing, relating to vi variables, the design type that you're using. Qualitative analysis, use text and images, coding, theming, relating themes and the design type. This is the last slide, slide number 22. I will stop, no, I'll stop on slide number 23, halfway. Determine your world view. Ah, determine your world view. Somebody has asked Rodo Cheng, can sample size be determined by nature of research? Of course, if it is quantitative, large. If it is qualitative, small. So it is, yes. I like picking the, the questions you pose. So what is your worldview? Post-positivism. You are determination or you are determining 
the validity of an idea of a theory there is reductionism all that data you have collected it will be reduced to one statistic like the f statistic the t statistic the anova there is empirical observation and measurement so you are collecting data and uh, like all positivism and i hope you know why we put the, the word post i gave you an article to read verification we go to verify the theory constructivism understanding multiple participant meanings social and historical construction and we start with an idea and try to do theory generation advocacy or participatory so 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 is what i was telling somebody who talked about transform uh transformative when we go on i i would like some of you to do advocacy studies participatory political empowerment issue oriented how many of you are concerned with the massification of education today and what does it mean to the poor people in our society collaborative change oriented pragmatism consequences of actions problem centered pluralistic real world practice oriented so you should be beginning to say what will be my world view for my thesis i'm going to be pragmatic I going to generate theory am i going to verify theory or am i going to sit in the space of advocacy and participatory governance for example and that's why i love mixed methods because by the way kama tungekuwa tunaongea mixed methods the quantitative researchers would have sat here wanaka hapo wananyamaza hapo hapo ndio wataka alafu qualitative wanasema sisi tuta construct we shall construct au wataka hapo bas but look at the latitude mixed methods gives us okay sir prof i have a question uh, so should we say for example people in investigation departments actually mm. uh, employ mixed methods even without knowing this is mixed method precisely precisely yeah oh, precisely yes uh finally we'll stop here several stances on philosophy and mixed methods by the way those of you who will come for a phd in this uh, even if i will not be the vice research methods i might teach some of you and you'll be surprised that you will say but ayiro is this really phd because what i'm teaching you i am being courageous to to lift you to another level so several stances on philosophy and mixed methods one paradigm pragmatism transformative Tashakori and Tedley and Mertens multiple paradigms dialectic perspective green linking paradigms to design features Creswell and Plano Clark epistemological stance ontology epistemology axiology methodology Guba and Lincoln this this lady this this uh, guba uh she's at texas and m and i had the privilege to sit and uh, she's one of the greatest authorities in qualitative analysis in the world shared beliefs in the research field morgan 
So what is what it is, how it informs I want some of you to, to know we are not just interested in the methods. We are interested in the methodology and therefore the pragmatic, uh, the philosophical stances become important. We shall look at that uh, on, um, on uh, Saturday. Uh, on Saturday. So Saturday, allow me to finish mixed methods. I also wanted to go um I wanted to I wanted to go on nilikuwa nataka nitangatange kidogo bado nasikia validity and reliability haija haija haijanoga uh, unit of analysis bado haijanoga kidogo kidogo hivyo uh, and then uh, the seventh edition of APA then now we can start but I'm ready. I'm ready to start your uh, chapter one introduction. So uh, next on Saturday we look at uh, we we have stopped at uh, philosophy in mixed methods. We shall uh, look at our interpretive lens in mixed methods. Uh, we will look at. Uh, emphasis sometimes both concurrent and sequential and then we'll get we'll get into interesting diagrams like this uh why i concurrent mixed methods is triangulation you have quant you have qual you bring them together for interpretation then you embed them but those will look at them uh on saturday um i have um I think I have uh, 15 minutes, which I normally want to leave for people to mourn or to sing about the lesson and to say, you know, today you, you have hit the climax. No, today this, this is horrible stuff you are talking to us about. The floor is open. Carol, remind me, uh, we will uh, send the the slides up to slide number 24 uh, and then also the devotion that gentleness uh, we'll send it to them uh, hopefully on Saturday I'll start sending them the first paper for case study on mixed methods Matthew over to you thank you very much Saturday I am in my zone as well <laughs> As yeah. you are teaching, I am mm. also playing around with uh, what my agitation is mm. and uh, where I want to sit, uh, whether it's mm. in advocacy um, or, uh, yeah, I'm actually leaning on advocacy, but I'm still playing around with my, with my point of agitation at the moment. So this today's class was giving me a, some sort of 360. Of where mm. do I go? How do I go about it? But mm. really, I am now uh, a converted. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am converted to believe that mixed method is the way to go because I've always wanted the stories behind the numbers, and I also want yeah. the numbers to 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 speak to show the the magnitude of the issue, but also to explain to the people yeah. who don't like numbers anyway. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. thank you. Oh, wonderful. Very good comment. Any other person? Uh, this is your time. We are wrapping up. 12 minutes. Uh, two participants. Um, Cindy, Emma. Um, yes, Prof. Um, my question is, how do you make sure that you come up with, um, with a unique problem statement? Mm. Another question, is there something like... Um, a boring problem statement in research, like when you are coming up with your topic. How 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 do you make sure? First of all, by the way, let let me advise you: if you want to be a good researcher, look at your points of frustration. Look at your point of distress. 
look at your point of contribution. And today, in today's world, ask yourself, how do I turn this research into practice? So, and, and uh, nobody can give you a problem to study. No, no, no. If I'll be supervising you, the few that I can hold, I will, you will give me your area of uh, familiarization or ease, like leadership, policy. And then we will now look at what space are you going to walk in? And then me and the other supervisors, we shall look for two, three, four studies for you to look at in that area. And when we say look at, look at the topic, look at the introduction, look at the problem sp statement, look at all aspects we have covered, conceptual framework, theoretical framework, uh, limitations, delimitation, assumptions, Look at the literature review very briefly. Go to chapter three, methodology. By the time you finish three, four papers, you'll be crystallizing and evolving the area you want to sit in. Then the supervisors will just give you momentum. Good. Any other question? Any other comment? Doesn't have to be a question. It can be a comment, observation. Uh, so the class is satisfied. That is very good. Akuna Maswali, Watu Ametosheka, Othello. Very good. So, uh, I've always been, I've been, a, I've been a fan of this mixed method. And uh, mm -hmm. it's good that you are a professor of mixed method and you are teaching us. Because I believe that the world that we are living in to do comprehensive study, you have to mm. employ both of these methods, mm. qualitative and quantitative, because it is not easy for you to do one of those and conclude that actually you have completed the, the job of doing research on a particular uh, problem. That's my thing. Thank you. Very good. Uh, how many, uh, some of it were comfortable with the research methods and um, where you are going um, uh, how many how many are feeling yes i think so I'm a prof. yes Do you... me, that's that's helen helen okay go ahead yeah for the many or few years i've, I've interacted with research i think i've always asked myself what is this mixed methods and mm. I think from today's session, uh, my heart is at peace. You've made things so simple. You've simplified them very well. And I think it's quite interesting to me. Okay. Thank you very much. That's very heartening. At least when you make, when you when you transform the heart of a human being towards something, it's such a big thing. But we are going to do exciting things with your proposals. God giving us good health. We're going to do very exciting thing uh, with seminars. Uh, uh, eventually, I'll convince you that you must have one or two seminars and uh, blended for those of us who are outside the country, but those of you who can come, just come. Sometimes it's good to know the, the deodorant uh, your uh, professor uses or the t-shirts he puts on, whether they are designer or not. You know, I, I loved my chemistry teacher because of his smell. You know, every time he passed and I was struggling with burettes and pipettes. And, uh, you know, good night, everybody. Uh, God bless you and uh, stay focused. It's been enjoyable. Okay. Good night. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. God bless you with your many many engagements. May the Lord give you the strength to go through each day. Thank you. Amen. And good night. Good night.
Lorenz Macho. Ok, lo venda Ñumban. Wait, wait, wait. You will be I'm back right. again. Go home. Uh, okay, no, you're really excited. Really excited. So, hey, huh? yes, I am. I am. But, but I'm always excited. But it's what happened. Okay, no, you're ever you excited. Sure your problem. He's in the office. Ah, I'm saying. Brenda, no. I've always been. I am excited mm -hmm. because Prof is explaining. It it looks like it is a very simple thing. But where? Okay. <laughs> I have to do it. So I'm going to face it head on. <laughs> hey. Then yeah, okay. that. Hey, we have to understand. We have to talk tomorrow. Eh? We have to talk and eh? see. If we you, are, you organize our meeting tomorrow, Chris. Please. Othello, you've not gone home. Yeah, yeah sure. Long time. Othello, oh, Othello. Wait, because if people are engaging me, I want to go now, but you are still engaging me. Bro. So can I just okay, walk yeah. away from you? <laughs> Brenda, Brenda, I... after. Um... At the after? <laughs> and Brenda, money. Oh, see, Brenda. <laughs> oh, no, 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 are you having a break? Othello, how long are you having a break? It's not a break. The lesson is over. 